Hi folks, Thomas Henson here with thomashenson.com and today is another episode of Big Data, Big Questions. So I'm excited to take on today's question. Today it comes in from a user. So the question revolves around, hey, you know, I'm working through um, a project that I want to do from a data engineer perspective or a data science perspective around uh, maybe deep learning or machine learning. What are some ideas for my project? So what can I do so that to make sure I graduate? So this is pretty awesome. Um, there's a lot of different options out there. I'm gonna go through some of them that I've done. I'm gonna go through some of them that I've seen some of the other bloggers and some of the other uh, data scientists in the uh, industry, what, what they're kind of working on. And then also just, you know, kind of spitball a couple different uh, options for you, just to maybe try to get it, you know, try to get the wheels turning and, and get you get you thinking in the right right way. So these are just some tips. These are just some ways for you to start start going out there. All oh, there's there's tons of documentation. There's tons of things on GitHub we can talk about. But I'm going to give you some of the ones that I would be looking at and kind of how to kind of go through those. So find out all about those right after this. So welcome back. So I want to take some time to thank everybody for answering and, or I'm sorry, submitting questions in for me to go through and answer. So this has been really awesome. If you have any questions, data technology related, data engineering, data science, put them in the comment section here below. Reach out to me on my website if you don't want to put them in the comment section here. So thomashenson.com forward slash big questions. I'll answer them the best I can on here. Um, I'm going through them right now and I'm getting through the questions. There's been, just been a ton of questions that have been coming in and I really appreciate the community for that. So without further ado, let's jump into our question for today. It comes in from a YouTube comment on my data analyst to big data project manager. It says, can you share some ideas of projects for my graduation? So this question really excited about because we as a community and if you have if you have more tips or any anything that I'm missing in this video, go ahead, and put them in the comment section here below so we can help this person with their project. Uh, for graduation so we get to help somebody you know come up with a project that's going to help them graduate this is pretty pretty awesome so first thing that you want to probably kind of look in and i'm sure that you, as you've gone through you've probably been through like i think you know the kind of the joke is we do a word count problem right on every everything so if you're starting to spin up spark or if you're starting to spin up tensorflow or, or any of the frameworks the first thing you normally do is you go through a word count problem so I did that in my uh, Pluralsight video where I was talking about pig and pig Latin. And so that was one of the first things that I did. And I compared a word problem in pig to a word problem in Java. And I was saying, hey, I can do this in about 13 lines of code versus in Java, we could do it in you know 100, 100 to 150. I can't, I can't really remember right offhand. But that was just an example of, hey, you know, everybody goes through and they do the, the word, word count problem. This is, you know, this is how much we can consolidate it by using pig. But what we want to do for this project, right? We don't want to just, hey, we've got a word count problem and, and submit that. We want to, we want to blow away um, our professor or whoever's grading, uh, grading our project. So let's go beyond, let's think beyond the word count problem. And so one of the things that I was, uh, I've seen out there and I've, I've been thinking about is um, there's a thing with the uh, Amazon Deep Lens. And so it's going to, it's going to be a little bit of an investment, but I've seen a lot of really cool projects with that. Actually, another blogger and, um, data scientist in in the industry uh big data gal so if you're following big data gal you've probably seen she's been working on using the deep lens to be able to decide if she's got good posture when she's typing so think about it like this so you know she's got the she's got the lens and it looks like oh you know how, how is your posture so i have horrible posture too so i thought that was a really good idea it's something something she's working on so just you use an example like that to kind of get it you know are there some things that you can use with that Obviously, if you watch Silicon Valley, hot dog, no hot dog, right? Um, just a lot of different ideas around what you can do with that camera. Like I said, that's going to be a little bit of an investment. There are some other things. So if you've seen uh, any videos from Siraj, uh, one of the things that he does with TensorFlow is he takes a lot of images that, you know, scrape, scraped off Google where of uh, Darth Vader, and he creates a model to be, hey, is it Darth Vader or is it not Darth Vader? And so think about an image classifier from that perspective. Um, you know, for me, maybe maybe I would do beard or no beard, right? You know, can you can I take a whole bunch of images of people with beards and people without beards and detect, hey, does this person have a beard or not? Or maybe it can get even a little more complex and do do a mustache or something like that. So anything with the image classifiers, you can definitely uh, look through some of the examples on TensorFlow to be able to use those. 
Another one, so if you're, if you're not wanting to stand up uh, TensorFlow, or maybe if you're looking more in the uh, web development area of um, machine learning and the TensorFlow, look at tensorflow.js. So there's a couple examples out there of some games where so you're able to use your webcam all through your all through your browser, and what you'll do is, you know, you can, I think the first one is like Pac-Man. I've talked about it before on the video here, but you can control Pac-Man with your hands. An idea that I had there was, what if you created a quiz application? And so a quiz application where, hey, just as simple as if you raise your right hand, this is, this is my right hand, I'm looking into the camera, it's a little bit different. No, so if you raise your right hand, you know, for this answer, or raise your left hand for that answer, maybe you could create like 10 different questions. Maybe they could be big data related questions, huh? So maybe you could say, you know, what is the definition of MapReduce and give two options. And you know, if, if, if it's option one, raise your right hand. If it's option two, raise your left hand. You can just get really creative with it. So um, that's, a, that's a really cool way. That would be a cool project too because of the fact that you're able to run that in the browser and you're using the camera. So, you know, think about your professor being there or whoever's grading it and they're, they're sitting there taking a quiz and it gets them kind of interactive. That's probably, you know, that's probably something that uh, they would like too, right? You know, you're kind of, it's not just a boring, okay, let me, let me, let me type in and look at your uh, project here. No, 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 you're, you're, you're having to move around and getting, getting them moving. So maybe they wouldn't like it either. No, I'm pretty sure they would. Uh, so anything, uh, also uh, anything with an object detection. So back to the uh, TensorFlow, um, when we were talking about beard or no beard. Maybe what about something with object kind of detection? So is, you know, are there some are there some problems that you see in the world or some inconsistencies or just things that you think you can optimize that you can start small with a project? So something as simple as object, you know, some kind of object detection, right? You know, can you can you identify different can you identify different cars or can you have different, you know, identify different bicycles or tons of different options there with object detection? Those types of projects are, are fairly easy to get the data for. For a small sample set, right? We're not talking about terabytes and terabytes of data, um, but to be able to scrape off of Google some images so that you can start training those models so that you can do some kind of object detection. Um, and then kind of flipping away, because I know a lot of this has been around video and around uh, object detection and images and, and those types of things. But now I want to talk a little bit more about, hey, you know, maybe maybe you're looking to do something with some some of the semi-structured data or something, you know, from a from a Hadoop or I wouldn't say MapReduce, but maybe from a Spark perspective on being able to make a predictor. So some of the big examples are housing prediction. There's a ton of information out there. So you can predict housing prices by taking, you know, information that's out there and being able to train it. So if you can you know, create a model to better predict what a housing is going to, what a house is going to cost. And so if you think about some of the features involved in that, be able to find the square footage, the location, you know, previous selling price, um, any of that information, there's a ton of it out there. And so that's a, that's a fairly popular one. So just kind of getting you thinking about that. Um, some of the other things that um, I've done. So one of my, I think in my second course on Pluralsight, one of the things that I did was I took weather data and stock data and I was trying to see if there was any kind of correlation. Um, so that's something I was able to really find that data pretty quickly and be able to do it. So if I were going to do something like that, maybe I'd, honestly, I didn't, I, I wasn't able to find a, uh, find a prediction, right? <laughs> so I didn't, so the, I, I didn't get it quite right, you know, and, and I think, I think the people, you know, in the financial service, they probably already looked at it, but there's, there's, a, there's different ways that you can do it, right? Like I would, I would look for more more data if I were doing this for my project where, hey, I've got some weather data and some stock prices and just maybe try to correlate more data, uh, more open source data in there too. Uh, you can pull in Twitter streams and there's a ton of different projects that you can look at and ideas that you can, you can borrow from around, you know, social media data, any of the data that's kind of open, open source, or I wouldn't say open source, but you know, open platform, right? Like Twitter data is open for the most part. You can find historical weather data. It doesn't cost you anything other than a search. Same thing with stock prices because they have to report, right? You know, public, publicly traded companies, there's a wealth of information in that. So that's why financial and weather data, that's, that, that's something that you see a lot of examples and it's real easy to kind of get off the ground. So, you know, using my example of, you know, trying to predict stocks with weather data, you know, just get to thinking about that. What are the other, what are the other sources? You know, what are, what's the inverse of it, right? Does, does the stock market, you know, predict the weather? No, it doesn't, but you see what I'm saying. You start, you start to think about some of those ideas. So I hope this was helpful. I hope you do amazing on your project. I hope you come up with something really cool that 
helps you graduate and then turns into a business for you, right? Or maybe, you know, maybe it's the next big innovation. So, you know, that's that's the cool thing about this project. It gives you an opportunity to get hands on. That's just, this is why you're a professor and this is why it's required for your education to get you hands on with the tech. And it's also something that you can put on your resume when you're looking uh, to start out and get that first job as a data engineer, or data scientist. So I appreciate it. Thanks everyone for watching. Make sure you subscribe so you never miss an episode and I will see you next time on Big Data, Big Questions.